Explore the paranormal with visionsmagazineonline.com. We're here at the Phoenix Fire Spiritual Center located in Irwin, Pennsylvania, and we're talking to the Reverend Nancy Welsh. Reverend Nancy, we uh, did approach you yesterday and we're hoping to get some comments after your session with Max. And Joe in particular, he noticed you were having kind of an emotional reaction and you did tell us you weren't quite ready. So we waited and here we are in your office 12 hours later and we'd really like to hear how your session with Max went. Uh, I found Max to be very powerful, but very gentle at the same time. Not overwhelming in any sense, but um, when I put my hands on the side of Max's head, my right hand started vibrating like crazy, which told me there's a lot of energy flowing through there. And then I, when I put my third eye to his, it was like just being blown away. You know, it, it was a wonderful experience. and. Then after a while I just sat back and just looked at Max and I felt the energy start in my head and like all kinds of things going on, all kinds of movement in my head and then it worked on down through my whole body down to my feet and I just felt like I was immersed in a pool of love. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt my heart chakra open and I just felt so much love. What type of impact do you feel that the sessions with Max will have in your congregation? really excited about it and really uplifted and energized and um, I think maybe there's one person who said she didn't feel anything but then she never does you know so but everybody else was was very impressed so we're talking about having Max back again um, yesterday uh, the energy was good I really felt that uh, as I as, as I looked into the skull that I was almost going to be drawn in um, which was a good thing. I mean, this wasn't like scary. Uh, this was almost like a communication. And what, how did this experience go for you? Did you feel it was more of a spiritual connection? Uh... Very spiritual, very peaceful. Mm -hmm. That's Peace the feeling I got. I and and uh, tranquility. And an expansiveness. When you look into Max's eyes, you are able to see the universe. Too. It's very peaceful, uh, very easy to meditate, uh, and I know sometimes people kind of laugh at this, but you figure with a crystal, what do we use in our computers, what do we use in our watches? Uh, uh, crystal store item, you know, information, we use it to store information. Um, the other feeling uh, that was most prominent was connectedness and uh, the connectedness of each individual and uh, the spirituality. Turn to the left in darkness or turn to the right in, in light. So uh, that's kind of what I felt that, you know, this was kind of a, just one more, one more tool on the way towards peace, towards light. Um, I, I enjoyed, the, enjoyed it, it was a, it was a, a, a great experience.
are drawn to Max or that Max chooses them? Oh, people definitely are drawn to Max. And then uh, I think at some point in their life when they hear about him, they say, they keep hearing about him, they say they have to come. They have to come. So it's like when you're sitting with Max, you've been there, they say it's like he's an old friend. I was raised an only child. And when you don't have something to compare something to, you don't know if you're psychic or spiritual or what you are. Because th this was a part of my life. I never had a crystal in my hand. I just had an open mind and a willingness to learn. They come to him because some of them, he is, they are called by him and they come for whatever they need at that point in their life. Whether it's a physical healing, emotional healing, mental, all of this has to come together to heal the self. They say sometimes their spirit guides come in and that they have talked to their ancestors through that. Of course, crystal is very, very powerful and it works on energy, which we are. And then you may be hearing what's going on around you, but you're tapping into the subconscious, unconscious, and you're pulling things forward, such as images, sounds, colors. It doesn't happen all the time. This is a hit and miss. But yes, uh, he is really a different crystal and created very, very differently. What you have just witnessed are but a handful of the personal experiences of people having their own private session with this mystical artifact known as Max, the Crystal Skull. These on-location accounts were an expansion of the interview we did with Joanne, who is the caretaker of Max, who originally appeared in Visions magazine. We knew his history. We now know what a profound impact Max, the Crystal Skull has had on so many lives. This story is not over yet. We called in an expert, demonologist John Zaffis. He is the bloodline to Ed and Lorraine Warren, the original investigators of the Amityville Horror. John Zaffis gives us his input on what strange powers he feels the Crystal Skull may have. Paranormal Quest will return after this. Welcome back to Paranormal Quests. After two days of researching and documenting experiences people had with a crystal skull, we reached out to an expert, demonologist John Zaffis. Hello. Hello, John. Hi, how you doing, buddy? Good. Joe, obviously from Visions. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you clear. Excellent. Do I have your permission to uh, audio record this conversation? Tara's got some pretty good questions here for you. I'm going to let her set it up. Go for it. All right, Tara's taking over right now. John, you've been running your paranormal museum in Connecticut for a number of years now, and this contains items uh, basically that have been exposed to the paranormal. These type of items have been uh, basically a central part of investigations you've done. Now we want to ask you today, are you familiar with the legend of the Crystal Skull, and what would your experience be? I'm very familiar with the uh, crystal skulls. It's something that has fascinated me for many, many years. I mean, we know quartz crystal holds energy. We know it definitely conducts it. And, you know, seeing all the documentaries and the different things that intertwined with it, it's something I've been very fascinated with. Uh, a few years back, I had an opportunity to be around one of the crystal skulls. And the energy that it exhumes from uh, these particular skulls is quite amazing. But what I was even more intrigued about, there were uh, a tremendous amount of people going through this conference that were over near the skull and they were able to uh, touch it. And I was very intrigued by all this. So as these people were coming by the different vendors and different things, I was talking to them and asked them what they felt or, you know, if anything uh, was uh, happening with them as they were near the crystal skull. A lot of people tell me that they felt a, a tremendous amount of energy. They were able to actually feel an energy and they would touch it and it would go right through them. As far as, you know, trying to comprehend and understand so many of the legends and the theories and the different things, but from a scientific approach, whether it's myth or legend or whether there's truth or not, some of the intriguing stories that encompass all the different skulls that are out there. Now, John, what I'd like to do is actually go into some detail and explain to you what I experienced when I was in my meditation session with Max the Crystal Skull. Okay, so you sit down, I'm facing Max, I take off my glasses, I'm placing my hands on each side of Max's head. 
okay closing my eyes uh, the meditation stay took about three or four minutes so first thing I feel is that just that my hands on a cold rock until about three or four minutes then things start to happen uh, first thing I see is this really light pink light okay that's the first thing that was coming through but along with that pink light I'm actually feeling emotions you know like a very very peaceful feeling has come over me which is washing over me it feels really good and then after a while of seeing that light then this very um, tingly current of energy goes through both arms through my chest and heart chakra area. That was kind of a surprise, okay? Um, so then, the next thing that happened, more toward the end of the session, I'm seeing this very light purple light, okay? At the very, very end, my right hand gets like a lot of heat built up in it, okay? And then afterward, I'm realizing, oh, my hand was near, you know, Max's matrix, you know? That's his major energy center. And that's where all the heat was built up in my right hand. So then, doing further research, I'm thinking, okay, I'm seeing pink, I'm seeing violet, okay? Pink is basically a color of love and compassion. And then purple, uh, that is your crown chakra color. Uh, that is a very spiritual color that I'm seeing. And so, you know, these colors did match the feelings that, in, that came along with them. So basically, just wanting your input and your comments on my experience. Oh, yeah, definitely, uh, Tara, uh, comments on that because here again, I, I believe very strongly it's an energy source. You know, when you study a lot of the different things, you know that you can associate the energy, and there are charts that tell you what the different colors represent. Is it a good possibility that Max was, you know, sending you that very warm sensation? and letting you know that, you know, you were comforted, you were cared about, you know, within, intertwining within the spiritual world. There's no doubt in my mind the way you can interpret these things from being around them and understanding the way people uh, look at the colors when dealing with any of the energy means that you're a very spiritual person within, that you believe very strongly in the power of your spirituality no matter you know what direction it is and what you do but you believe in that positive force that tells me that you had one heck of a session with max the skull i i, I don't want to confuse stories either it was given to them due to one of the children being ill. This Lama, this Lama Norbu, and he was a Tibetan trained healer, and she worked for him. She ended up getting that skull, but it sounds like the Lama worked with the daughter and did extend her life. He, I mean, he tr entrusted Joanne with that skull, which is pretty, you know, special that he gave it to her. Now Max is really getting around, so it's, it's a pretty neat story. What a fascinating piece of history to unravel some of the unique stories, whether myth or legend or truth, are intriguing on some of the locations and places that they found uh, some of these different skulls. It's uh, a part of, you know, our history. You know, will we ever have the actual scientific proof on how these were created? Where did they come from? How many thousands of years old they really are? I don't know if we'll ever actually have that or not, but boy, oh boy, I sit back with bated breath, hoping someday we will know. Looking at that footage, I thought that was basically Max's story right there. You know, we did the pre-interview for visionsmagazineonline.com. This was part two. We have it covered. Uh, lo and behold, something happened. Uh, Tara found something over my shoulder when I was editing, 21 days into editing this film. She found something that I didn't know I had shot three weeks ago when we did our one-on-one -on -one with Max. It is that amazing, it is that once-in-a-lifetime shot, that holy grail, and I think we have some. Strange as it may be, we may have actual paranormal evidence of Max's powers. More on this when we return to Paranormal Quest. Explore the paranormal with visionsmagazineonline.com
this this is just like you know I mean doing the old um, uh, Sherlock Holmes thing once you eliminate everything what you have less must be the truth <laughs> yeah this this is wild yeah that's just there's just so much energy there like I mean it's just like light radiating you know like there's a presence there almost you know yeah that's a good point <laughs> you know that's a good point that all of a sudden maybe that energy was just like there and then you know you know boom yeah right that that, that was and this is almost like and you probably have uh, experience with this when you do what is an emf the recordings mm -hmm. you know you know you you sometimes don't hear something but when you play it back right exactly this is probably like you said you didn't see it but you know you're getting a there it is. yeah there it we is. get lucky that we get one of those photographs right there I think you did, because a lot of people have taken a lot of photographs that weekend of Max, and I haven't seen anything like this. You said, if you've done all the eliminating and you've been in the business long enough to, <laughs> to know cameras and so mm -hmm. forth, then I can't see where this doesn't qualify for an honest to God, quote unquote, paranormal experience or so, you know. And it, you know, the thing of it is too is, is if you kind of look at it, the, the main energy field is kind of coming down almost right to the third eye, and, and, you know, and then being kind of diverted out the base or so, you know, type of thing. You know, that's it's like I said, this is not a tool of worship. This isn't something to worship. This is nothing. This is a tool for growth. That, that, that it, yeah, it's unexpected, but you know, it's still like I said, it's a tool. It's an energy item, and with all the energy around. I mean, you was there that night. There was probably a lot of that whole weekend was like a a real nice, high energy type of a thing. Basically what we have here is opening up the computer 22 days after our meeting with Max. Here you can see the sequence of photographs as they were taken and loaded into the computer. This was the anomaly right here. Looks like a bad flash picture. Uh, it is something I would throw away 9.9 out of 10 times, but I thought it was worthy of getting into Photoshop really seeing what we have here. And what I'm going to do here is just alter the contrast. It's going to separate light from dark, uh, give us a greater expanse providing more contrast between the light and dark zones. We start seeing an image form on here from ghost image to we actually see Max and what is actually quite um, unbelievable. Uh, when you look uh, right below Max, who is sitting on the pedestal, he hasn't been moved in all of these sequences of photographs. He has never been moved during this closing ceremony. We look up here uh, right around Max's third eye that Jim pointed out earlier. Again, uh, the detail in this, let's look at this close up here. You can see individual, these are not together, these are individual little spliced images emanating from this huge energy field right above Max, which looks very skull-like in, in and of itself. Uh, look down here, we're looking down here at the base of Max. This basically looks like a rib cage. It, it looks like human anatomy. Uh, there is no other description for this is not blurred. You can you can see you can see distinct patterns, just like an X-ray, just like an X-ray of a spine. Just looking at the energy that Max. This is more of a confirmation per se. The Max actually has something within itself. But some of the things I've found and experienced, it's kind of interesting that when you get back and you look at things, you 
sometimes you don't realize that you actually have something and then all of a sudden you get something like this something it's amazing, amazing like experience this. that just so happens that we had to be the right place at the right time and we got the right shot at the right time and that's kind of what this paranormal quest is being at the right place at the right time Um, this film was designed to answer questions. Uh, unfortunately, I think it raised a few more questions than I actually originally intended. I, I think I answered a few, uh, both personally and professionally with Max the Crystal Skull. But Max is an anomaly. He keeps you on your toes. He gives you something new almost every time he's out there and comes in contact with the public. Is it the energy connection? Um, that's for others to say. That was for others to say. The fact remains, the photograph is there. Um, I haven't had an experience. I haven't had an experience. Um, kind of glad I didn't. Yeah, I'm glad I kept myself out of the loop and remained objective because this photograph was a surprise and I took it that seriously. And uh, I'm glad we were able to present this evidence to you on Paranormal Quest. When I look at the picture of Max, I can't say that I'm, I'm amazed by it, but I'm really pleased that we captured such a picture to open the eyes of some of the skeptics out there. And I do want to pose this question. Did Max do this on purpose? Did he target the biggest skeptic in the room, my assistant editor, Joe? I, put, I even posed that question to Joanne because I wanted her comment on it, and she felt the same as I. You know, like this has happened before, this type of situation. So, you know, you have to be the judge when you see this, but what we see, you really cannot see with your naked eye. This is, this is energy, this is something that's present, but we're not actually seeing it visually. But the camera did capture it, and it's there for all to see. Thank you for joining us on this very special episode of Paranormal Quests.